So you're curious about Linux, but you're not quite ready to uninstall Windows just yet? Maybe you're not sure which flavor or distribution of Linux that you want to pick, and you wish there was a way to try them out before you actually commit to a permanent install. Well, luckily there is a way. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can try before you buy with almost any single Linux distribution out there so you can get a feel for what suits you, what works on the computer you actually want to try it on before you commit. And best of all, you don't have to wipe anything from your computer. You don't even need another hard drive to install Linux on. All you need to do this is a USB stick. So let's start with where to get Linux distributions. If you watched my previous video, then you would have seen a website called DistroWatch. This is a great place to get started if you're not sure which Linux distribution to kick off with. But if you already know which Linux distribution you want to use, you can actually search for it directly in your browser with your search engine and go directly to their website. So if you're on DistroWatch, all you need to do is go over to the list on the right and over there, you'll see the most popular distros as we spoke about in the previous video. So once you click on them and scroll down the page, you'll see a link to that distro's official website. For anyone going directly to the website, open up your browser and go to your search engine. You'll notice I'm not using Google here, but we'll talk about why I'm not using Google in another video. Type in the name of the Linux distribution you want. In this case, Mint. If we type in just Mint, we might get all sorts of results. So let's type in Linux Mint, just to be sure. If you are using Google, make sure to click on the official Linux Mint link or the official link for your distro. That's because while you're on Google, a lot of scammers actually try and convince you to download from their website by making an almost identical image of the official website. And Google doesn't do a great job of filtering these out either, especially considering the scammers can just pay for advertising and Google doesn't really care who pays for advertising so long as they pay. So once you're certain that you've got the official link by verifying it in your address bar at the top of your browser, then we can safely go over to the download link. On Mint, it's right here on the first page. And on most Linux distributions, it is on the first page, but we'll go through other Linux distributions in later videos. For now, we just wanna demonstrate how we can get this up and running. So clicking on download, we go to another page where we can see different flavors of the same distribution. Another callback to the previous video, you'll remember that we discussed desktop environments. We discussed KDE and GNOME, but Mint has their own desktop environment called Cinnamon. That is the default, so to start with, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to just download that. Once you click on the version you want, scroll down the page, and at the bottom you'll see a list of mirrors. These are just different download links for the same thing. Once you click download, your browser will either automatically download it for you, or it might ask where you want to put the file, depending on the settings of your browser. Mine automatically downloads, so that's gonna automatically go to my downloads folder. Once that's downloaded, have a look at the size of the file. Here we can see that the cinnamon edition of Mint is three gigabytes. This will be important later on as we get further into the video. But let's leave that there for now and talk about the USB stick. This is my USB stick that I'll be using for this. And I'd recommend a USB stick with about 16 gigabytes. You might be asking why we need 16 gigabytes when Mint is only three gigabytes. Well, that's because we're not going to download just one version. So back in our browser, I'm going to download another version of Linux Mint just for demonstration purposes, but this could be any other version of any other Linux distribution you want. And this is why the USB stick should be a reasonable size that can fit a few distros on it, as opposed to just the minimum size. But if you only wanted to have one USB stick for one Linux distro, you can do that if you'd like. So how does putting a Linux distribution on a USB stick help us? Well, let's go back a few years, back to when CD drives were the norm in computers. Back then, instead of a USB stick, or instead of downloading something from the internet and installing it directly, we used to use CDs. So if you wanted the newest version of Windows, you wouldn't necessarily download it from the internet because the internet didn't used to be as fast as it was today. 
These CDs were designed to install a fresh copy of Windows on a completely empty hard drive, especially if you're building that computer yourself. What this means is that the boot process that happens every time you boot up your computer could be done with the CD instead. But as I just mentioned, no one has CD drives anymore and people barely use CDs. So in place of a CD, we're going to turn our USB stick into an install disk. But that also means we need to format the USB drive, which means that anything that's currently on the USB drive will be wiped. So if you have anything important on your USB drive, be sure to back it up because we're not uninstalling Windows. That could be as simple as dragging and dropping or copy pasting the contents of your USB drive to a folder on your Windows install. And if you wanna go back to using your USB drive as just a device for transferring data between computers, you can do that as well. This change isn't irreversible. So I'm going to assume that you've backed up all the important information on your USB drive and that you're ready to format it. That's where the next piece of software we're going to download will come in. It's called Balanet Etcher. So go back over to your browser and open up a new tab. In your search engine, whether it's Google or something else, type in Balina Etcher, as you see it here on the screen. Once again, we want to verify that we're clicking on the correct link, avoiding anything that has the word add next to it or around it. So once you're on this web page, scroll down to the download link. Here you'll see multiple versions of Balina Etcher for you to download for your platform. Once that's downloaded, we'll go back over to the downloads folder. I don't have Windows installed in any of my computers, so I can't demonstrate that. However, the process is extremely similar between Windows, Mac OS, and even Linux. So even if the install process doesn't look identical, you can still follow along. In your downloads folder, you should have a .exe if you've downloaded the Windows version, or a .dmg if you've downloaded the Mac version. Double click on this install file and follow the instructions for installing. Once it's installed, you should have a program that looks something like this. If you just wanted to dedicate your USB drive to one Linux distribution at a time, then this is the only other piece of software you'll need. However, if you want more of a Swiss army knife and something that can boot multiple Linux distributions, then continue watching because we're going to download one final piece of software that's going to make this much easier for trying different Linux distributions. Back in your browser, in your search engine, type in Ventoy, and once you're on that page and verified that the URL is correct if you're using Google, click on the Downloads button. We want the option that says Live CD. So once that's downloaded, go back over to Balina Etcher. Here in the first option, where it's asking what image we want to flash to our USB, we're going to select Ventoy. If you just wanted to dedicate this to one distro, you would select that distro. But for multiple distros, select Ventoy. Next, and this part is extremely crucial, we're going to select our USB drive. Two things to note. This is your final chance to back up any of the contents on your USB drive before they are wiped. So make sure that there's nothing important on it. Secondly, make sure to select your USB drive. If you have multiple drives installed, then you might see a lot of drives in this list, but you have to make sure that you select the right one because we don't wanna wipe a different drive. A little cheat sheet is making sure that you select the drive that corresponds with the amount of storage you're expecting. So if you've put a 16 gigabyte USB drive in there, then it should reflect somewhere in this menu that it's 16 gigabytes. And finally, we click flash. This will wipe the contents of the USB drive and turn it into essentially a Ventoy drive. Now, when we go back to our downloads folder, all we need to do is drag and drop or copy and paste our Linux distributions over to the USB drive. And you can put as many Linux distributions on this USB drive as the USB drive can fit, which is why I specified that you probably want something around 16 gigabytes. Now comes the really fun part. If you're watching this video on the computer you wanna try Linux on, then you'll need to move this video over to either another computer or to your phone or tablet so you can continue watching along because we're gonna shut down your computer. Once it's shut down and ensuring that the USB drive is still plugged in, 
We're going to turn on your computer again and repeatedly tap the delete key. This should stop the normal default boot process, which would normally boot into Windows and should get us into the BIOS, which is what boots before the actual boot drive. If tapping the delete key didn't get you into the BIOS and you just booted into Windows as normal, then it might be a different key depending on the make and model of your motherboard. F2 is also a popular option. So turn off your computer, turn it back on and tap F2 repeatedly if delete didn't work. Here, we have the option to select another boot option. So we're looking for a setting that's called boot override. This is what it looks like on an Asus motherboard. And this is what it looks like on a Gigabyte motherboard. Once you've found the boot override option, we want to find our USB drive again. So we're going to boot into Ventoy. Once you select that, your screen should look something like this. If it doesn't look like this and you either got a black screen or your BIOS didn't do anything, you might have to turn off Secure Boot. Secure Boot is a lovely feature that Microsoft promotes, which stops your computer booting into anything that isn't Windows. You can see why Microsoft would promote it. Microsoft would have you believe that every other operating system is unsafe, naturally, but this isn't the case. The only time Secure Boot is really important is if your computer isn't with you at all times or safe at home when you're away from it, meaning that someone else has physical access to your computer that wants to cause you harm. In this case, they could just as easily enter the BIOS and turn on Secure Boot. So unless you already had a password on your BIOS to stop anyone from tinkering with it, this isn't really much of a security feature. So once that's turned off, now we should have the option to boot into any other device that isn't Windows. You might need to save and exit your BIOS before you can boot back into the USB drive. If you've booted successfully into Ventoy and your screen looks like this, then now you can use the arrow keys to navigate between the different Linux distributions that you've previously dragged and dropped onto your USB drive. All you have to do is hover over the one you wanna try and press enter. Now the boot process for that Linux distribution should start. And within a few moments, you should be in that Linux distribution. This is very similar to a try before you buy demo. Here, you can do just about anything you want, but I'll start at the top of the list with the only thing you shouldn't do. If you're not ready to uninstall Windows, do not click on the install button or follow the install instructions. If you have a big window offering you to install, then all you have to do is click the cross at the top right or the top left of the window, just like Windows or Mac, and you can use the Linux distribution as you would a normal computer and get a feel for it. Find out if this is the sort of Linux distribution that you would want to install. Web browsing and all the usual stuff should work here. And the only real limitation is if you wanted to try some games. The nature of this demo version of Linux means that we're actually a little bit limited on storage. So if you go and sign into Steam and try and download a game, you're not going to get very far. But if you're really interested in finding out how your games work on Steam on Linux, then we'll do that in a later video. For now, this is just to find a distro where you can start to feel at home so you can start to move away from Windows. And best of all, as promised, so long as you didn't click that install button and wipe any of the other drives, when you restart your computer, it should go right back into Windows, which is the default boot option. So nothing's lost here. You can try as many Linux distributions as you want in their demo mode, so long as they support booting from a live USB that is, and you can still keep Windows for everything else. But in the next video, if you're finally ready to install Linux permanently, we'll go through a few methods to do that including one method where you could potentially have Windows and Linux installed on the same computer. So stick around for that and I'll see you in the next video.